it or night. Fellow helpers under the truth, as John would say. Amen. Welcome those who are with us on live stream also. Tonight will be our 68th lesson in the book of Genesis. We'll be dealing with some of the repercussions of Joseph's brothers meeting Joseph. <coughs> Our text is Genesis 42, 21 through 38. We'll conclude chapter 42, I believe, tonight. Yes. <coughs> Joseph has just finished saying to the brothers, Bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, so ye shall not die. And they did so, so they're heading back home. They're going to head back home. They said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered in them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about from them and wept, and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn, and to restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provision for the way, and thus did he unto them. And they laded their asses with the corn, and departed thence. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the inn, he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them. They were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God has done unto us? And they came unto Jacob their father unto the land of Canaan and told him all that befell them, befell unto them, saying, The man who is lord of the land spake roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We are twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you from your, from, deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him unto thee again. He said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way in which ye go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. So children are not always a blessing. Yeah. <coughs> if yours are, you want to just pause and give thanks for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
It's not always the case. Tragic to have to say that, but that's what sin's done to the human race. It's just another one of the fruits of sin. Now, I want to say a few words as we begin so we will keep, ever keep before us that we are seeing God and we're seeing man and we're seeing the effects of sin and we're seeing the effects of promises and all this is woven into the text. We never want to forget what sin brought into the world. It'll answer a lot of questions for you. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Sin brought it in. That's why. So I just listed here some some human experiences that sin brought into the world. These are just things we've seen up to up to this part of our text. Fear, right off the bat, fear entered in. Remember, we were afraid. Toiling and sweating to get what you eat. That that came in. Childbirth was with sorrow. Anger come in. Remember, Cain was angry with Abel. Murder was entered entered into the world. Bigamy came in. Personal repercussions of personal sin came in. Inappropriate marriages came in. Continual evil thoughts made an interest. Pervasive violence came in. Drunkenness. Sinful ambition, self-exaltation. Men uniting to make a name for themselves, that started. Barrenness among women. Famines. Fear of another man taking your wife. It's a result of sin. Sin brought all this in. Strife. Wars. One person despising another. Aggressive sodomy. A longing for what was cursed, mockery, grief, sorrow at the prospect of the death of a son, the testing of a man, a man despising his birthright, men having to be told not to touch another man's wife. He had to be told that. Envy, maliciousness, having... Men having to agree not to harm one another. <laughs> had, to make, had to make a covenant. They wouldn't yeah. harm each other. Deception entered. The experience of being overcome by heat in the day and cold and frost at night. A man fearing his brother. The molestation of women. Excessive retribution. Like when uh, Jacob's son slaughtered all, uh, all the men of the city. A mother dying while giving birth. How about that? That Rachel died when she was giving birth. Brothers hating one of their own. A determination to lie. Brothers selling their own into slavery. Mourning a refusal to do what's right. Injustice. A widespread famine that was very grievous. Frustration. Plugging guilt. Fear of what God had done. See, those are just some of the things that sin brought all that in. Yeah, amen. None of they, none of those things existed before sin. Sin brought all of it, all of it in. So if you ever encounter someone who say, "Well, why did if there's a God, how come He allowed that?" You know, yeah, it's right. sin brought it in. It's amen. sin brought it in. Yes. When man became self-centered, that's what happened. And I think most of our parents do very well here, if not all of them. That's why you want to make sure your children do not grow up self-centered, yeah. wanting their own way all the time. Yeah. You want to make sure it doesn't happen, because this, this, this is what caused all this, self-centeredness. Men do not often think of the... Uh, what I call the panorama of human feelings and experiences are quite diverse, ups and downs and pains and joys and stuff, that have been brought on by sin. As by one man's sin entered into the world and it brought all of this, yes. brought all of this with it. You can see that the 
blood of Christ can cause you to triumph over every one of these things. Of these. That's right. That's not a blessing. Nature, well, you can't do it by nature. That's right. A person whose nature is corrupt can't triumph over yes. something that's dominating them. Right. Only purity can triumph over, Amen. over this. When we read these records of people living with far less than we had now, that we have far less than we have, when you read these records, we we should resolve. We're not going to let any of these be found in us who are living in, in the day of salvation. We yeah. we don't want we don't want this to be said of our generation who's living in the day of salvation, mm -hmm. when the heavens have been opened and reconciliation has been made and atonement has been made and forgiveness is offered. It's inexcusable mm -hmm. for these, but they are. I understand they're still found, but mm -hmm. you don't want to get used to it. Inexcusable. In fact, if you get used to it, you'll become a part of it. If you get used to sin, sin will take you over. Yes. Amen. <laughs> All right, the brothers are still before Joseph. He's dismissed him, but they're still they're still before him. <clears throat> and they start to talking to one another. In their minds, they go back probably about 30 years. He'd been gone for 20 years. The famine had been there, the uh, plenteous crop, seven years, so that'd make 27, and they were in the midst of the grievous famine, so we're probably somewhere in the vicinity of 30 years ago. And their memory goes back over that 30 years. And he said, we're guilty concerning our brother. He, they, We're being punished because of what we did to Joseph. This is 30 years later. Yeah. Now, do you want to know how hard sin can make people? Some people in our day do not have enough sense to make that kind of association. Yeah, right. They are so dull mm -hmm. and so inoculated against conviction mm -hmm. that they never can connect things that happened to them with the sins they committed. Yeah. Can't make that connection. Now this is my own. Uh, they, what what Moses said happened to them. Moses said to Israel, "Be sure your sins will find you out." Well, they found them out. That's right. yeah. They found them out that day. Now this is my own observation, but being as man's created in the image of God, it appears to me that sin etches something in a person's memory that they. It'll linger there for a long, longer than you wish it would linger. Right, yeah. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. That's because you're made in the image of God. So you're sensitive of violations of your creator. Amen. And so what this did to them, that this consciousness, this developed in them at the time, there must have been a lot of grief and fear and trembling and all that that associated with it. We saw the anguish of his soul. So see, now it didn't comment on this in the in the record. When he gave the record of, of throwing Joseph in the pit, didn't mention any anguish of soul. Yeah. He had anguish of soul and grief of mind that scared the poor young boy to. Mm -hmm. He was crying. He was pleading, and now they remembered that. Yeah. See, saw it in their minds. Them throwing him in the pit, just heartless hard like a rock, and then sat down and ate like nothing happened. You find this was a bitter and a frightening experience to young Joseph. See, the record itself, when you read it, didn't, it didn't leave you with that, uh, that impression. They said, we wouldn't, when he besought us, we, would, he, we wouldn't hear. So he begged them. He pleaded with us. Some of the versions read this way. When he pleaded with us. We did not give ear to his prayers. He was, some think he was praying when he was going down in there. He begged us for mercy. He cried to us for mercy, making supplication to us. We heard his pleadings. He was begging us for mercy. He begged us to let him go. See, they'd pay attention. They just did it anyway. Now they remember it. We shouldn't have done that. Be sure your sins will find you out. We shouldn't have done that. They were being convicted of their sin. Uh -huh. God did this. 
<coughs> and because of this, because we were so, we were like beasts. We didn't pay attention to him, the poor. He was our brother. This, this was our brother, our younger brother, and close to his father. And now this anguish, this distress has come upon us. Other versions say that's why the distress has come upon us. This anguish, this trouble, this affliction, this misery. Now with them, it wasn't like being beaten or anything like that. It was they didn't know what was going to happen. That was see, sometimes that's worse than something happening. <laughs> You're just fretting about. I wonder what's going to what's going to come of this. They'd sown to the wind, as Hosea said. That day, now they're reaping the whirlwind. Before they ever took one step to go home, all this come back. Now they're going to be thinking about it all the way, all the way home. While they're talking, Reuben, he was firstborn, he speaks up. Didn't I say to you, don't sin against the child and you didn't listen to me? I mean, you're concerned about it now. Don't you remember when I tried to stop this from happening? Remember how he came to him? He said, don't do harm. He delivered. The scripture says he delivered him out of their hand. And he said, just pull him in this pit, and then Reuben is going to come back, left him out of the pit, and take him home to his father. Now, there are at least two factors involved here that could have hindered the brothers from throwing Joseph in a pit. Well, one, the one was God was actually sending Joseph to Egypt. Now, if they'd have known that, they could have said, well, it's God's will that you go to Egypt, so we'll pay, the, pay for the passage. We'll see, but they didn't. They didn't know that. That's right. they, they were ignoble vessels being used by the Lord here at this point. And beyond their basic hatred for Joseph, their own, their own brother was revealed. He, he wasn't like them, but they, they didn't think about this. These were blockades put up there. These were blockades. It wasn't someone they found out in the desert that they tried to sell. It was their brother. That's right, yeah. And this, the fact that this was their brother should have thrown up like a little back off here, don't they should have thought about God. But what, what's God? How does this all appear to God? But he didn't think about this. Now, many boast that blood's thicker than water. This verse so confirms to you that that's not true. That's right. <laughs> it is not true. <laughs> Sectarianism is thicker than water. Hmm? Isn't it? Sometimes baseball's thicker than water. It is, isn't it? People say the relation first. That's how it ought to be. Well, that is not worked out here. And you think the violations of this, that just because you have a family means you're close. <laughs> actually, when there's actually very few families that are close, percentage-wise. Cain and Abel, they were brothers. Ishmael and Isaac, they were half-brothers. Jacob and Esau, they were brothers. Jacob and Laban, they were relatives. Mm -hmm. he's, he's showing you all through Scripture since sin supersedes family. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. So you may be a person, your children, doesn't make any difference if you're their father or mother or not. Mm -hmm. They sin right up there in your face. They don't yeah. care. Uh -huh. So don't you, don't you place fundamental stress on your family. You should, you should do everything you can to have a good and a godly family. But you're not exempt from the warning of man's foes should be those of his own household. You're, you've not been excluded from that. If you have, if you don't have that experience, then you've just been blessed, extra blessed, and there better be a big thank offering coming up from your house. You better not be slothful in the things of God. Not if you got that kind of a, kind of a privilege. You better be serving the Lord of Thanksgiving. Yes. Actually, one's relationship to God, now through the Lord Jesus Christ, is superior to all other relationships. Yeah. We defer, by default, we defer to God. Amen. It's our default. Yes. 
you know, this conviction that they're experiencing here, you, you can't make that happen. Oh, no. Even the warning from their brother didn't yeah. make that That's happen. That's right. But when it did happen, yeah. when, when you are convicted of something you may have already repented of, yeah, this is the time to to give thanks to God that you were forgiven for it. That's right. And to and to reaffirm right. your your devotion to God that you're never going to allow this to work in you again. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I know by experience that some things from the past, way back, they cr they yeah. crop up when you get older. They mm -hmm. crop up. There they are. Some some of them I'm not. I wasn't sure whether I did ask forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't remember, so I did then when I, when I thought of what I did then. Amen. Took it to the Lord there. Brother, I, I'm impressed with how close this guilt was to the surface yeah, that's after right. all these years. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's right. Yeah. Their first reaction was to defend themselves. Their second reaction was, remember what we did that's to Joseph? Right. Uh -huh. That's right. It was a very second reaction after yeah. possibly 20-some 20, 20 years. Yeah. It's amazing how close this was to the surface. Yep, mm -hmm. That's what I meant, that man in the image of God, it seems to me man's been made deliberately so that kind of condition, it's like a safeguard. If it's handled right, it's like a safeguard yeah. and for recovery. It was the truth. Yeah. Oh, oh the truth. yes, it was. It wasn't an image. It was probably understated, as a matter of fact, here. Reuben answered, now, Spake I not unto you? I mean, I said this. This wasn't. It wasn't that you looked at my face and I looked displeased. But I said something about this. Here's what the record says. The actual occurrence, Genesis thirty-seven twenty-one. Reuben heard it, and he delivered the, him Joseph out of their hands, and said, "Let us not kill him." And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hold hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. I didn't tell him that. but So Reuben's intentions were noble, but he underestimated the wickedness of his brothers. He, this was even transcended to his, to his understanding. He was going to take him out of the pit. Of course, he didn't know that this was the high purpose of God as being worked out. He didn't know this either. This tells you that when you don't know what God's doing, you do stupid things. Yeah. Now, you really want to put that down in your book and remember that. When you don't know what God is doing, you will inevitably do stupid things. Yeah, that's right. When you know what's God's, what God is doing, you can shape your life accordingly. Amen. Like if God's intention is for his son to bring you to glory then exactly how do you justify focusing on your life in this world? Amen. How do you just, because you're going to have to, you're going to have to account, if this is what you did, you're going to have to explain this on the day of judgment. You're going to be faced with, why did you, when I told you up front, I told you it was going to happen. Heavens and earth are going to pass away. Those that know not God to be not the gospel will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. I told you what my son is doing. He's interceding for you. He's bringing you to glory. This is the day of salvation. Give you an advance to get to heaven. And now, explain before the assembled universe and all the angels. We're ready now for your answer. Why did you do that? Yeah. And just like the man that didn't have a wedding garment. Mm. Yeah. Speechless. Amen. Yes, Brother Tony. He, he had a good thought about this. His, mm -hmm. But, you know, he had to share with them and all this anyway. That's right. Uh, all the, Everything he was going to go through now that he's going to be a part of that. Even yep. though his, his intentions, That's right. Mm -hmm. Even though his intentions were to rescue him and get him back. Uh -huh. Now he's got, I've got, i still be a part of this with mm -hmm. y'all. Yeah. Got to share the penalty for yes. it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we, no wonder the psalmist said, don't go with the wicked. Don't mm -hmm. journey with them. Yeah. Don't sit with the sinners. Mm -hmm. Amen. It yes. shows why it's so important when you have a thought to do what's right, to not tarry, but to do it immediately. Not Amen. Wait for a convenient Amen. time. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Amen. Re yeah. Reuben could have been more aggressive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he could. He did. They were being aggressive against Joseph. He could have been aggressive yeah. against I, them. I think he, he underestimated how how aggressive they were. He yeah. thought maybe they had good sense yet, but they didn't. Yeah, we yeah. can never underestimate 
Make the power of sin. That's right. Hey, yeah. you never, you never want to talk to sinners like they can think good. Because if they could, they wouldn't be doing it. You're going to have to do their thinking for them. You're going to have to remind them of things they need to know because they aren't going to think of them. That's why Peter in the day of Pentecost, the people he's preaching, they didn't consider that they had crucified the Lord's Christ. I mean, they didn't. He had to tell them that's what they did. I understand that this interferes with a lot of church growth approach and this sort of seeker-friendly churches and things like this, but sinners don't know the seriousness of their of the situation, of their situation. So someone has to inform them and tell them about it. <clears throat> now, we're going to look at this. Do not sin against the child. He was 17 at the time. Do not sin against the child. I, what exactly does that mean, sin against the child? I found that to be a... To me, it was an interesting line of thought, but I couldn't find anyone else that thought it was that interesting line of thought, so I'll just uh, have to give you what I think about. Sin, sinning against a person. Now, most of the time, sin is against God. It's depicted being against God. David said, against thee and thee only have I sinned. But here... <laughs> sin against the, boy, the, the the lad. Remember Joseph, when he was tempted with Potiphar's wife, he said he wouldn't sin against God. Wait. Reuben said the plot of his brothers against Joseph was sinning against the child. God warned Israel about sinning against God. Moses said, Israel, in having a golden calf, made it sign a sin against the Lord your God. <coughs> Samuel spoke of, to his son, spoke to his sons about one man sinneth against another. Oh, so that's just one man sins against another man. Moses has been against God. But see, this is introduced. What we're going to discuss? What is this? Jonathan spoke of his father, King Saul, about sinning against David. <clears throat> David told King Saul he'd not sinned. David hadn't sinned against him. Mm -hmm. See? Of his sin with Bathsheba, David said, I have sinned against the Lord. See? Solomon spoke of a man sinning against his neighbor. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk spoke of a person sinning against his own soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about that? Peter referred to his brother sinning against him. My, bro my brother sinned against me. How often shall I forgive him? The Spirit states that when we sin against the brethren and wound their conscience, we sin against Christ. And Paul said this person who commits fornication sins against his own body. See, so sin, mm -hmm. sin against, what does that, uh, what's that mean? Well, to sin against, if you're talking about God, means to offend God, make him angry, means to break his law, awaken his anger. You sin against someone, you wound them, you bring a disadvantage to them, you treat them in an ill manner, you sinned against them. Now, I don't think many people, th many people think about this, sinning against a person. Scriptures do, do talk about this. Mm -hmm. I told you not to sin against the child. Mm -hmm. Hurt him, wound him, put him at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. make life worse for him. Mm -hmm. You ever made life worse for somebody? Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. Amen. Said, I told you don't sin against a child, and ye would not, yes. ye would not. Mm -hmm. He gave no attention, paid no heed. So the brothers had a couple of barriers thrown up. One was the, the lad himself, and the other was Reuben. See, they, mm -hmm. there were a couple of warnings. I don't do this. Yeah. But. About sinning against uh, your brother or someone in your yeah. family, Sister Julie said your fleshly family tends to bring you, bring out the worst in you because they know you the best. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's <Amen>. right. <laughs> yeah, amen. Yeah. Also, on that line of thought about sinning against the person, 
thought if it's sinning against one of God's people, I thought when Jesus said, if, if you've done it to one of the least of these, then you've done it unto me. Mm -hmm. If you do, if you, if, again, if that's one of God's people, then that compounds the, the yeah. situation. Even yeah. if it's not one of God's people, if it is, it's even more bad. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Now, in a matter of sin, there's a, there's, a, there's a point that is reached when the sinner can't be persuaded not to sin. Yeah. There's that point. Maybe you've waited so long that the person's got to that point. Yeah. I've had, and I've thought, oh, boy, I wish I'd have, I wish I'd have said something earlier yeah. instead of waiting this long. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Hey? Now, James describes to you how sin occurs. First, he says the man's drawn away, lured off the course, lured off the highway of holiness, see? Lured off. Person is tempted and stops looking to Jesus. Person stops fighting the good fight of faith. They let their pedal off the spiritual gas, so to speak. Yeah. They're drawn away. And then they're enticed. Because the devil can't entice you when you're looking to Jesus. When you're, Amen. See, you're changed. When you, when you look to Jesus, you're changed by his countenance. Amen. That's why the devil's got to lure yes, you away to get anything done. He entices you, beguiles you, baits you. Mm -hmm. Baits you. It's like you bait a fish. And then sin conceives. Now, to the mind, what the child has conceived is like a child conceived in the mother's womb. That's right. Now he thinks this thing, well, I, can, I can do that. I think I can do that. i got to think of a discreet way to do it. I don't want to advertise it, but it's all conceived now. So right. Now plans start to be made. Let's, let's kill Joseph. See, while they saw him coming, they could have, they could have squashed that. Mm -hmm. Sin conceives. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless there's some kind of an abortion. It's gonna... Yeah, that's right. Because mm -hmm. the next step, sin's brought forth. And a man take fire into his That's right. And his clothes not mm -hmm. be burned? Yeah. See, now, mm -hmm. we live in a time when they have seeker-friendly churches. Which this is like it's like a lie. They're not seeker friendly at all. They're fleshly friendly. They ought to just say well, what they what it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> seeker friendly. If a real seekers, they want to you want to hold God out to them. Yes, amen. Yeah. Real seekers. Yes. If they're not real seekers. Well, you gotta get the hammer out. That's right. <laughs> Now the brothers of Joseph, t at least 20 long years, possibly as high as even 30, have passed, and God has stabbed them awake with the words of Reuben and the conduct of Joseph. All of a sudden, this is all stirred up and there they are, just as vivid in their minds as when they pitched Joseph in the pit. There it is. Now, if, you've ever, if you've ever experienced anything like this, like this conviction that uh -huh. what you did is it's just like you were just got through sinning That's and right. it may have been a long time ago but you just it's just like you just did it that's conviction that's how the lord works the lord the lord isn't going to get anyone out of sin that is not first convinced that they did in fact sin yes they did Amen. sin so you own up to it and then you get grace see yes. <laughs> the lord does employ this manner now when dealing with with sinners all right, now they're talking. He just gives you like a summation. That must may have been a lot, a lot of talk going on here. But they didn't know Joseph. Joseph knew what they were saying. They didn't know it <laughs> because he spoke to them by an interpreter. And you never know who's hearing you. You know, when you're murmuring or complaining, or you, you never know who's listening. <laughs> He spoke through an interpreter. He didn't speak to them in, in Hebrews. He 
spoke to them through an interpreter. They were, they were we as we are speaking in the Hebrew language, which is probably in its formative, it was being formed at that time, what we understand. Now, I'm going to say just a few words about this language thing, because I've, I have some very strong persuasion about it, but it's still in a state of formation. I'm persuaded that the Hebrew language is unique because it was developed by people who were God conscious. Yeah. And the status of a people determines how they talk. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you don't believe that, take a dictionary from 1900 uh -huh. and take one from 1950 uh -huh. and then take one from 2000. And there will not be very much similar. That's right. You'll find words in the dictionary that we frankly never dreamed would be there. Mm -hmm. Some of these four letter words, we never oh, yeah. dreamed this would be uh -huh. considered a part of the language. Yeah. But the people, see, the people shape the language. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, I believe that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This language was developed with a God consciousness mm -hmm. at its root. And I did a little research in it and found that I strengthened my own persuasion of this. <coughs> that it was a holy language. I spoke to an interpreter, and this is a type scene here. Mm -hmm. Actually, God speaks to us through an interpreter, too. Yeah. He was the Lord told me, well, I like to tell me what he told you, and then I'll be able to evaluate it a little more accurately. He speaks to us, first of all, through the Holy Spirit, who's an interpreter. And then Jesus teaches us, he interprets. Then the Holy Spirit also interprets us to God. He says, we don't know, we don't know what we should pray for as well, so the Holy Spirit, he interprets this unseen knowledge, we're not sure what we should pray for. He interprets that feeling or sense. He interprets it to God. So you got this interpretation between heaven and you going on Amen. all the time. None of us has an immediate connection with God. Yeah. Amen. It's all through a mediator and through the Holy Spirit. God talks, he's got to, it's got to be interpreted to you. You talk to God, it's got to be interpreted. You've got to be mixed. When some it's got to be mixed with yes. something for us presented to God. Mm -hmm. Someone has to clean it up a little bit, so yes. to speak. Yes. I think a lot clearer, too, is why we need the man Christ Jesus. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. We have to have him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, one of the things God said he's going to do through Zechariah, he said, that I'll turn a pure language to the people. So they'll be able to call on me. So actually, praying to God is more than you just getting it off your chest. Amen. A lot of people who pray ever think about is God? Did God hear this? Or what I thought it was I speak it into the air? Well, you don't speak into the air. Oh yes. Oh, don't, don't say that because it's those people in Scripture that explained it in, uh -huh. spoken up into the air. If you don't have some kind of contact with God, your prayers are like yeah. useless. Yeah, that's right. They have to be filtered through something to get up to God. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. So there's a sense in which God only speaks to us, to an interpreter. And if you've quenched the interpreter, interpreter, you've quenched the Holy Spirit, you grieve the Holy Spirit, do you really think you'll be able to understand what God has said to you if you've grieved the interpreter? Or if you've dishonored Christ, do you really think that he'll come and stand in your place before the Father if you're grieving him? See, it's very important to know these, Amen. Know these things. <laughs> well, because he was interpreting, speaking to an interpreter, they didn't understand that Joseph knew them, so he turned aside this doesn't mean that he like turned his back to them. 
because it said he returned. Uh -huh. So he, he left the room and broke his heart. Uh -huh. yeah. All of this came back to him too, That's see. Right. Yeah. All this came back to him too. And he went aside and he wept. Because that's a response of a man of faith. Mm -hmm. He had not become so bitter. Yes. Ah, see, some people have been so bitter they never could have recouped. Uh -huh. yes. But he, he wasn't that bitter. He wept over their condition. Then he returned to them and he communed. It doesn't say what, he, what they talked about. It just says he communed. But I'd, I was, uh, must have been, I was very curious about what kind of communications these were. <coughs> Then, he, he, then he, he bound Simon before their eyes. Bound him. Yeah. Now some versions say he put chains on him before their eyes. If this is the case, he was bound like Joseph was bound. Remember, Joseph was bound uh -huh. and had chains around his neck. So, so he, was, he bound him maybe like he had been bound uh -huh. in prison. So Simeon will now remain a prisoner until they return with Benjamin. And oh, on, that, on their way home, it's a, quite a little jaunt. Before they leave, he says, they'll fill up their sacks. I assume they had enough sacks to go to last for a long time. They had to feed at least, se at least 70. People had to be fed. They, they weren't going to plant any of this seed. Because there's a famine in the land, so none would grow. So this one it must have been quite a haul of seed. And he fills it, fill their sacks. Now there's a parallel here. Before they could fill their sacks, they had to get where there was some corn available. They had to, they had to get where it was available first take the sacks there. Some people, this hasn't uh, dawned on them yet. If you want some of the rich things God has, you got to get where they're being dispensed. Yes. Yeah, I can get it on my own. Well, most of us haven't had much success doing that. If you need some testimonies, we got a lot of people who could testify to you about that. Most of us didn't have much success just digging it out for ourselves. Maybe after 15, 20 years, you got a couple of little kernels. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But I think you got to do. You got to go where it's being dispensed. Amen. Jacob found out where it's being dispensed. That's where he went. He didn't go someplace. He didn't say, "Well, you know, we've had a bad history of dealing with Egypt. They didn't treat our Abraham right. They didn't treat Isaac right. They didn't treat Jacob. He, he didn't go. He didn't even go down in Egypt." But I think we should try and get it. Let's try and find some place where we can drove corn. Well, they, they had to go where it was being dispensed. I know some people could misinterpret that and think we're tooting our own horn and this sort of thing. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you want something from God, you got to go where it's being dispensed. Where it's being served up. Where what God intends his people to know is being made known. That's what you have to do. And so Joseph says, and by the way, you're filling up the stacks. Give them their money. Give them all their money back. Put their money back in the sack. Now, apparently, from the narrative that each brother was like a steward over, over part of the... They had their own sack. They had their own money. See? So they were like stewards over a part of... Uh, Jacob and his uh, clan of uh, what they had. Now, if Joseph was nearing 40, then some of these brothers were, were nearing 50. So these weren't, these weren't young boys. And so they were responsible, had their own money, bought their own money, bought their own corn, had their own sacks, had their own animals of burden. But they traveled together. But they travel together. See, that's what we're doing. We're headed home. Uh, we, we found some places to get some provision. We're headed to the homeland. We're journeying together, though, see? Yes. We find that a lot of what we've invested has been returned. Yes, 
Oh, a lot of stuff we gave up has come back. Yes, amen. So there's a type seen here. <coughs> when we as brothers and sisters share in the assembly, it must be from our own resources. Yeah, if you're going to share some, share from your resources, what you have received. Uh -huh. If it's a lot, share a lot. Mm -hmm. If it's not, in your estimation, a lot, share what you have. Yes. Amen. It may be like some rich delicacy that people don't eat, or eat it in large quantities. It may be some very precious uh -huh. nugget of truth that you got. So be sure you, you share it. <laughs> and give them provision for the way. Huh? Uh, this isn't part of our program, Joseph might have said. Our program in Miami isn't to foot the bill for them going back. But give them enough to get back on, aside from what they bought. Aside from what they bought. So they're journeying home. They had more than they knew, really. Really. And there you have it, another type. Every child of God has more in their bag than they think. More is in there. There's some stuff to make it all the way home in there. There's a sense in which we've been given heaven to go to heaven in. It's like a vestibule, but it sure is pleasant. And they departed. But they had to load their own animals. Uh, Joseph had their servants fill their sacks, but they had to put the sacks on the on the donkeys. <laughs> That's how the Lord is. That's how the Lord is. He'll use someone. He'll just dump out a big load of grain near you, a big load of spiritual blessings. But you got to you got to load up your mind, your heart. You got to you got to load up your donkey, so to speak, yourself. So they uh, they loaded up their own animals. And they'd bought a lot of sacks, except now the sacks are all filled with corn. So, And it was a donkey caravan. It wasn't a camel caravan. So I got some pictures of a donkey. Uh -huh. They still use donkey caravans. Wasn't that, a, wasn't that a display of holy consideration? Give them provision for the trip. Yeah. Amen. So they don't eat up everything before they get there, you know. That's right. I mean, but the psalmist said that he daily loads us with benefits. Amen. So you can say, you know something, I feel loaded today. Amen. Daily loads us. what he said. Daily loads us with benefits. <laughs> and believe me, you got more in your pack than you know. Amen. First place you have to stop and be refreshed, open your bag and see what's in there. <laughs> so they departed. <laughs> As I mentioned, they had to go where the grain was dispensed. They had to bear the inconvenience and the cost of getting there. They had to have the resources required to obtain the goods after they got there. Once the grain had been obtained, they had to load it on their beasts themselves. They had to take care of it on the way home and direct the beasts all the way home. They were required to sustain themselves from the supplies they'd received. Not to buy something along the way. Huh. Yeah. The procurement of spiritual resources is very much like that. Mm -hmm. You have to pay the cost to get there. Mm -hmm. You have to sell what you have, so to speak, and procure what you need. You have to take care of it on the way home, live off of it on the way home, get accustomed to it. That's what you're going to eat when you get home. Uh, yeah. We'll get used to it now. Hide the word in your heart, see? Yes. Hide it in there. Amen. And delight in the word of the Lord. In other words, you could be, I imagine they kind of developed a taste for Egyptian corn on the way back. They kind of, it's a pretty good, pretty good stuff. Good quality, good quality. Well, they stopped at an inn. Someone say, Yes? This we can also see that God won't do everything. We do have to work out our own salvation yeah. with fear and trembling. Amen. We don't sit back and do nothing and let God take total control. Amen. But in a way, they stopped at an inn. 
And I looked up a desert inn, give a little picture, an artist's representation of it. They had a place for water, a place to sleep, a place to feed your animals, a place to take the burdens off the animals. They stopped there along the way. See, the believers' trip to glory are much like the brothers' trip from Egypt to Canaan. It's quite a bit like that. On the way, we got peace with God. See, we got on the way. Access to God and intercessors, all spiritual blessings. And there comes a time you kind of got to stop and have rest unto your souls. So they stopped, and one of the brothers opened up his bag to give something to eat to his donkey, and whew, there sat his money in the mouth of the sack, right on top. There it sat. And he said, uh, my money's here. Here it is. All the money I gave is here. Well, what's frightened everybody? Whoa, this is some kind of trick. Joseph, the ruler there said that he, he spake roughly to us, you know. I bet this is some kind of trick so he'll be able to put us in prison. Because sinners always think the worst thing, you know. You know, when God was angry with Moses and was going to kill him, you remember that time? Because he didn't circumcise his son. Did you know that occurred while he was at an inn? Exodus 4.24. <laughs> of course, when Jesus was born, it was at an inn. Uh -huh. See, one of these, we'd be like a motel or a hotel to us. Uh -huh. And that Samaritan, you remember, that good Samaritan that found the man, fell among thieves, he uh -huh. took him to an inn, That's right. paid the fare thereof. Now, here in a, in a commercial setting, one of the brothers prepared to give some fodder to his animal, finds... He's got all his money. My money's restored. Yeah. He apparently counted it out. It's all here. I don't know what they said. Their heart failed them. Yeah. Right. They were afraid. What is this that God's done to us? What? Yeah. It was it just because they didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's why they, And whenever sinners don't know what's going to happen, they always think bad. That's what sinners do. That's this is right. how they think. The righteous, when they don't know what's going to happen, said the Lord will direct my steps. Yeah. See, they think they think different. Yes, that's right. They think different. They, this is going to turn out to my salvation. Yeah. This is how this is how the righteous think. Sinners don't think this way. When sinners don't know what's going to happen, they think the Lord's oh, maybe going to be a tornado. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what it looks like. of sin without the reassurance of a propitiation mm -hmm. then that is also how one feels. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, it, just, it just leaps over the rest of the trip which could have been as high as a couple hundred miles. It leaps over it near Jacob's house because God details aren't the best thing to talk about. As you're talking about details that Jesus did. Now that, now that you can talk about but he just passes over the, you know a lot went on when they found this out, but he just leaps over it till when they got home, got to Jacob's house. There comes a time when human details aren't important anymore. Maybe you've had to say this to some people, say, I don't really want to know that. Good. This, you know, this trip home should have been accompanied by great joy. Oh, yeah. yeah their trip there, they were probably hungry. Yeah. But here they're, they got all the sustenance, they're on their way back. It should have been rejoicing. But God wouldn't let them be That's happy right. on the way back. That's right. <laughs> Heads their way up with thorns. Yes. On the way back, they came to Jacob, their father, <coughs> back in Canaan where they belong. You remember this, uh, God had promised Abraham he's going to have a lot of offspring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting the idea, both by Jacob's response and the brother's response, that somehow this had slipped away from them. Somehow they weren't thinking about this, about there's going to be a lot of seed. We're going to have a lot of seed, great multitude, a great nation. Yeah. It, it, somehow this had got away from them when they got back. So they... Um, 
They didn't know that they were, God was bringing Israel down into Egypt as like an incubator. They're going to multiply down there until they get big enough to enter the promised land. Yes. Whenever, um, like they were in this famine and they they were probably stressed and all these things mm. to remember the promises of God. Whenever yeah, you're in those right. situations, so you won't just get in despair. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They told him all that befell him. Yeah. Remember now, these are men like up to half a century old. Just not a lot of teenagers. Told him everything that happened. He gave a pretty pretty faithful report. Pretty faithful. They carefully reported precisely what they had said about Joseph. He's not. We told him he's not. We're 12 brothers. That's interesting. We're 12 brothers. And they don't, with these old, old Joseph, we're 12 brothers. One's not. Some versions say he's no more, he's dead, or he's gone, he's no longer living. They really didn't know what had happened to Joseph. Uh -huh. yeah. They had no idea. That's right. The literal rendering of the expression is not is the one there is no him. That is it? Mm. Not around anywhere. We don't know where he's at or if he is at all. Yeah. It's my understanding they were saying Joseph was dead. Yeah. And really, they had to keep that lie up. Uh -huh. yeah. that's, that's what... Jacob had concluded that Joseph was dead, just like they thought he would. Yes. So they couldn't very well say, maybe Joseph's alive. See, they, so they had, to, they had to keep this lie going. I thought of the shaping power of a lie. I've wrestled with this in my younger years. Maybe you have too. Lying or misrepresentation, that's a serious matter. I mean... Well, here's what the scriptures say. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars yeah. shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. Woo! Is that, you, mean that, you mean lions like that serious? Yeah. Amen. It's how serious it is. You go to hell for lying. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, it's serious. But see, liars don't think about this. Again, Revelation 21, 23 talks about the glories of the world to come, and it concludes by saying, There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. Yeah, this was a lie. They made, they made this lie up. And again it says in Revelation 22, 14, and 15, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Yeah. Amen. See, now, the uh, there's a certain religion that teaches that it's good to lie, that to your enemies you should lie, try and trap them famous world religion. But see, you, want to, you always want to pick up on what God said about this. Whoever loves and makes a lie. Once the lie is fabricated and told, it like gets a hold of a person's mind. Yes. And sometimes the person who told the lie, he gets to the point, he's not sure whether the thing really happened or not. See, it's that bad. Get, yeah. did, did this really happen or was I just lying about this? Yeah. That's what a lie does. It gets, That's right. If Satan didn't get you to believe a lie, mm. like another gospel, so it, it'd get a hold of You'll yeah. serve it just like it was a real thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, after they had told everything, they emptied their sacks. And as they emptied their sacks, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. Mm. And when both they and their father, see, they all saw this together, they're uh -huh. emptying the sacks, getting ready, I gather, to store it, and Boom, here's these bags of money. Boom. Nine more of them pop out. There they are. Jacob sees it too. Both the brothers and Jacob saw the bundles of money. And thinking it was a cunning trap, <laughs> they realized they were dealing with someone greater than themselves. 
Now, brethren, if a person is making their way back to God, they got to come to the point where they realize they're dealing with someone greater than they are. And I'm saying that the modern church is not leaving that impression. It has humanized God. Made him a pal and a friend and so forth. See? But one of the first things in coming back to God is you suddenly it dawns on you, God is greater than I am. That was dawning on these brothers. Picture of being faced with God. God is the beginning of wisdom. That's right. Amen. Yeah. You know, when Ananias died because he lied, yeah. great fear came upon all that heard these things. A few hours later, his wife, Sapphira, yeah. she dies by the hand of God, and great fear came upon all the church. Upon all the church. And he adds there in Acts 5 that of the rest durst no man join themselves. Nobody wanted to join up with that Jerusalem church. Boy, unless they meant business with God. They did not. See, but there's all kind of churches sinners feel really comfortable going to. But they didn't at that church of Jerusalem. They said, don't go down there, boy. We have heard that liars fall down dead and the deacons have to carry them out and bury them. Hmm? If there ever comes a great awakening, I expect things like this will probably happen. Might thin out the ranks quite a bit. <laughs> Membership drops suddenly. Mass burial. The fact that spawned this fear was that people, these brothers realized they were dealing with somebody that was bigger than them and greater than them, had more power than them, more influence than them, and they realized that and they feared because they didn't know what he was going to do. And we're living in a world that could do with a good dose of that fear. <coughs> so Jacob, after surveying the situation, he says, Me, have ye bereaved of my children? Bereaved. Maybe you wonder, what, what does that mean, bereaved? means robbed or taken away from you. took my children from me. Took, jo took Joseph from me, and now you're taking Simeon from me. And now you want, now you want Benjamin. You breathe me, my children. He thought Joseph was dead. Thought Simeon probably was as good as dead. And now he's fearing for Benjamin who's the last person he has born by Rachel, yeah. his favorite wife. So he's looking at his household and one-fourth of his children, counting Benjamin, he's looking at him, is no longer there. What all happened in a short period of time. There it is. <coughs> he says, all these things are against me. <laughs> Tells you from the standpoint of the present time and the current circumstances, things looked extremely unfavorable. <laughs> To Jacob. How can anything good come from this? Well, he did. There hadn't been a lot told him, see. He'd been revealed enough, so he shouldn't have thought this way, I understand, but he wasn't able to think as clearly as, as you can think on things like this. Now, I think uh, it's very important that God's people learn how to reason correctly. I have observed over the years, and I'm becoming more settled in my persuasion on this, that most Christians do a lousy job at thinking. They aren't good thinkers. Most Christians are not good thinkers. Professing Christians, let me qualify that. Most professing Christians are not good thinkers. They get confused too easily. They're bamboozled too easily. It's important to learn to think right. Say, well, how do you think right? You think with God at the center of your thought. Yeah, uh -huh. You learn to reason nevertheless. Mm -hmm. You learn to bring that into your vocabulary. Yeah. And if God's before me, who can be against me? You bring that in. God's working all things together for good. You bring that in. You learn to think properly mm -hmm. and good. <coughs> now, here's something God had told Jacob. 
But at this time, it appears as though it wasn't prominent in his thinking. The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereupon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken unto thee of. But that wasn't uh, quite clear at this time. To Jacob, and now before you uh, get after Jacob because of this, he wasn't the last person that forgot what wonderful things they have yeah. been given by God. Yeah. And in the hour of crisis, that's all they can think about is that crisis. Yeah. That's all they can think about. Since that time, there have been a lot of things come into the picture. Laban had deceived him. You know, he had to work 14 years for Rachel. Laban changes wages and a whole lot of other things that happened in the meantime, just to let you know that it's not an easy road we're traveling from earth to glory. God hasn't called us to like a pleasant vacation trip. It's not like that. Jacob, Abraham, he had his... Sorrows and Isaac did too. All of these patriarchs had things they had to go through to obtain the promise. <laughs> so Reuben, he's going to comfort his dad. He says, now, Father, he says, slay my two sons if I bring him, this Benjamin, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him to my hand, I'll bring him to thee again. Now, Reuben, he's the one that's sent and laying with his father's concubine, you remember? So, but aside from that, he, he appears to be more noble than some of the others. He delivered Joseph out of their hands the first time, it says, temporarily, Genesis 37, 21. Now he offers his two sons. Which two sons? He had four sons. Reuben had four sons. Hanok. Falu, Hezron, and Carmi. They're mentioned in Genesis 46, 9, Exodus 6, 14, and 1 Chronicles 5, 3. He had four sons. Which two is he talking about? I'm going to give you everything the Bible says about, about uh, Reuben's sons. The children of Reuben, Hanak, of whom cometh the family of the Hanakites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. That's it. That's a sum total you know of. So everybody doesn't have the same weight in Scripture. But you could, everyone doesn't have the same value. We're all not alike. This is it. This is it. This is all you know. This is Reuben we're talking about. Head of one of the twelve tribes. No indication which sons they were. Some have said, well, it was, he, what he really meant to say was two of my sons. That's, a, that's what one person thinks. Several people think that. In other words, what he meant, what he meant was his two oldest sons. That's what he meant. Well, first of all, they're assuming that all four of these sons had been born at this time. Yeah. So I'm going to think that he just had two sons at this time. So that's, I'll just let it rest there. Now you may rest assured that Reuben's trying to show his father that he loves his sons just as much as Jacob loved his sons. And just as I wouldn't put my sons in jeopardy, I'm not going to put your son. I'll, you just let me have them and I'll bring them home. He learned from that experience of Joseph. He left Joseph. See, he left Joseph for a while. See, he's going to keep his eye on him. But he didn't know God's purpose and plan behind all of this. It doesn't impress him. Jacob didn't say, all right, that sounds like good. I'll be able to kill two of your sons. That didn't seem like a good solution. He said, well, no. My son shall not go down into you. Benjamin's not going. 
That's it, because that's I don't think this is the best thing to do. It. It's a preliminary. He's going to change his mind on this, but it was his preliminary conclusion. Now go down. Why not? Well, his brother's dead, Joseph. He's dead. I've learned to live with this now for many years. And Simeon, he's he's not at home. He's down there in Egypt. And Benjamin's the only one here left. He's my favorite wife, Rachel. This is the only other child she had. Mm He's -hmm. all I got left. This is my this is my lone memory of Rachel right here. Uh -huh. No, I'm not going to let him go to a mischief. Now, again, this is when your when your faith isn't working. This is how you think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mischief may befall him. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I understand an animal got Joseph. Maybe an animal will get Benjamin. Which Benjamin wasn't a child either. Yeah. He was probably somewhere in the age of 30 or 40 years old. Mm -hmm. But he thought this is what this is how you think. See, when all of a sudden you're you're pulled off into fretting, yeah. this is just how you think. You don't think straight. He, now he did get straightened out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will go as far as to say God's people do eventually get uh, straightened out. So it's, just, it's his decision now. Uh -huh. The boy's not going down with you. Yeah. Now we're going to see, the rest of the book, we're going to see whether he was able to sustain that or not. Yeah. Whether that interfered. God will bless you if you'll let him. If you'll just let him, he'll bless you. All right, we're going to see that there are some circumstances that God doesn't leave up to you. Amen. Or any other man. Let me name a few of them. <laughs> Making a great nation out of Abraham. <laughs> Making Abraham's name great. Mm -hmm. Multiplication of Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. Making Abraham a blessing. Mm -hmm. Israel going down into Egypt. Egypt afflicting them for 400 years. The judgment of Egypt. Deliverance of Israel out of Egypt. Israel entering into the Canaan. The Messiah being born in due time. Dying at the right time, raising at the right time. See, these are things that men had no input at all. Yeah. That's, right. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. Uh -huh. We're dealing with something God had ordained about the formation of a nation. Uh -huh. Jacob didn't see it clearly at this time, but he hadn't just it hadn't been spelled out as clear as it has to us. Yeah. But this is not going to inhibit the purpose of God at Amen. all. Yes. It's still going to be carried out. Well, for those in Christ, we must reason with God, with what God has said he's going to do at the center of our thought. If we get to thinking about our experience, how things are going, why did this happen, why did we got to get out of it, that's like a rut. It's like a rut, and you get stuck in that rut, and it leads. It doesn't lead to glory. I'm going to tell you, this is a rut that leads off the path. You want to get out of that rut and start thinking about what God has said, what he's doing in salvation, where he's taking you, and how that all things work together for good. You've got to get to thinking about that instead, because if you're diverted from the working of God being at the center of your thinking processes, you will experience care, fear, discouragement. See, all that That's right. is in the wake of that Amen. kind of thinking. I think I closed there. There's, uh, there's quite a bit pictured in that text that I, I was truly blessed by. Amen. To see the pictures of the in human involvement where God is working and how that God doesn't put his plans on hold until somebody catches up, you know, or and if you have something you'd like to add tonight, Mr. Barbara? Thinking about this environment when the brothers came home and gave the report to their father, a couple of things that whenever they gave this report to their father, their guilt was compounded by what their father brought up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've already taken away one of my sons. Oh, yes. so there's another one left back. So it's yeah. continuing uh -huh. to work on their, their guilty conscience yeah. about what they had done. But then that sort of environment, you think about all this guilt that all of these men had, how that would affect an environment. Mm. And I think in some way it would have affected their father as well. Amen. His yes. reasoning and his ability to see past the circumstance. So sin 
Sin is very far reaching in its effects. Yes, His brothers yeah. are the ones that sin, but it went much farther than they themselves. Yes. The boy Amen. Jacob told Pharaoh, said, My days have been few and full of trouble. And the whole atmosphere even in, 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 in engulfed her own father mm -hmm. the treachery and the lying and all the guilt right. all these yeah. years. He couldn't, it yeah. was so clouded he couldn't even think straight. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Good. The, um, you mentioned this inside there that, that um, when you lie it's actually like a little project. <laughs> it, it, it's a lot of work in lying. There, there, there's right. a, lot of, yeah. a lot of stuff you have to remember. Yeah. Yeah, because you you don't just remember the truth because it's not the truth. So you got to fabricate it, and then you have to remember what you said. Otherwise, you you get caught in it. Yeah. So lying is a lot of work. And my dad always told me, tell the truth, and you don't have to have a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, law enforcement counts on that. So yeah. When they're okay. dealing with criminals, yeah. Yeah. they count on the fact that it's hard work to make and sustain a lie. Yeah. And most can't do it very well yes. at all. That's right. <laughs> they may for a while, but not very well. Uh -huh. I was thinking about the lasting effects of sin. Yeah. Especially certain sins. Yes. Uh, that uh, there, there's a sense in which uh, Satan will use that to keep throwing it up at you and causing you to lose faith. If, if he can get that oh, yes. he will because even though even though we're forgiven there are certain sins that it, you're just not going to forget mm. it, it's going to stay with you as long as you live mm -hmm. and, and Satan will use that yes he'll, he'll sure try to make you think you're not forgiven because you keep thinking about it mm -hmm. you know? I was thinking too about this this point about sin that God didn't forget sin. Yeah. So I think that's the reason why we don't forget it either. That's I mean, right. it had to be mm -hmm. dealt with. That's so right. He didn't forget it. So how can we just forget it? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought. Now He said, "Don't sin against a child." Yeah. Now, and He wasn't very aggressive. You know, He didn't. But you know, if He had seen this as a sin against God. Mm. And he had been sure to stop this, shut this down. Mm. You know, if, it had, if it had been of that uh, magnitude to him, but you know, just being against uh, the child, then he 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 wasn't really. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't important to him, but if he just seen it for what saying. it really was, yeah. it, mm -hmm. he was really banking on the brothers being better than they really were. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. Speaking yeah. of aggressive, we remember how Joseph was aggressive. He ran out of the house. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Then, the, then that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Mm. The, yes. The, the, the picture came to my mind that the committing of sin is like a weaving of web. Mm. But while we can weave the web, we can't unweave it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And even even yeah. though forgiveness that sin is forgiven. That forgiveness of sin doesn't mean that all the repercussions right. uh -huh. of your guilt while living in the world are removed. That's right. Mm. Yes. Amen. Paul, Paul expressed many times the the goading yeah. uh, memory yeah. of, of his of his sin, mm -hmm. and I think our this is not anything that we can uh, that we can make too personal to one another, but we should make it personal to ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That this is. That's right. be, your sin will find you out. Amen. 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 Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Sister Michelle. I was whenever it said that Joseph understood his brothers, but they didn't know that, they under, that he understood them. Well, he had not forgotten the language of home. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. <laughs> he had not forgotten the language of home. He was in a place that was yeah. um, Amen. not conducive to, mm -hmm. to remembering mm -hmm. some things, and he had not forgotten. Mm -hmm. he, wouldn't, he didn't even have to have an interpreter understand. And he understood everything it said. So yeah, that's he was right. He had not seen to converse with, yeah. but he still remembered those things that were precious to him. Amen. 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 A good number of years. He was a young yeah. man. You know? Yeah. All right. Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah. You think God could have cleared up a lot of this for Jacob? It just said, Jake. God had spoken to Jacob before. God could have just said, Jacob, let me. Sorry for all the confusion here. Let me just <laughs> tell you what's really been going. But God didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. God doesn't always clear everything up for His people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, we, we used to hobnob with a lot of people 
who were always talking about what God was telling them, you know. God told me this this morning, and God told me that this morning, and they just, these people just, they always kind of had an inside track, you know. Uh, maybe you've been around people like this oh, yeah. before. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know, and uh, my, my own, I wanted to be charitable and everything, and, but I think a lot of these people are lying. I don't think God's really talking to them at all. I think they're making it up because there's, there's, there's always a need to live by faith. You don't always have all the detailed information. We have we have the big picture, but not 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 the detail of every single circumstance. God didn't fill Jacob in until the end. He saw it. That's right. That's right. That's how it's going to work with us. At the at the end, we'll yeah. we'll see it. Well, there was a, a prophecy once delivered to us that. The prophecy was next year there's going to be a lot of people that believe and a lot of people that don't. Yeah. That's yeah. Insight, yeah. That's, well, yeah. <laughs> that's the truth that delivered with the prophecy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll have a word of prayer. <coughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for <coughs> these records. <clears throat> they show us a lot about ourselves and about the nature of flesh, but they also reveal a lot about yourself and your stability of your promises of your faithfulness. We pray, Father, we learn from these and uh, excel in Christ Jesus as you intend us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>